The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Well, we're going to take a look at some of these markets this morning. We'll look at the German DAX, and we can also see the um, FTSE. Uh, they're basically in a sideways move with a slight downward bias, but uh, not very much. It's uh, still relatively close. Uh, one other thing that we want to talk about uh, briefly is this uh, pattern that has been in the NASDAQ for quite some time. Let's get this up here. We'll be able to show you here. You can see the uh, the ABCD pattern going back to uh, early uh, November, and uh, you can see the small pattern up there where we had a you know high up there near that 106. Uh, the actual high on this uh, Nasdaq was one ten thousand six hundred and ninety seven, I believe. It might have hit ten thousand seven hundred, but I'm not sure. We're down. We dropped a couple hundred handles from that uh, last night, yesterday, and last night, but that's still early whether that means anything or not I don't know but you know nobody else does either we're just looking at these patterns now we did get a interesting one from our friends over in Australia that trade the e-mini S&P you can see here very nice pattern that we're looking at here in the in the uh, E mini S and P. Uh, you uh, see the high that we made up there. That was an A B C D pattern. Uh, we came down and we, uh, you know, down to the 3140 level. Went up to the 78 percent level to the exact number, uh, and then we completed the A B C D pattern last night. So that's a uh, that's basically a completed pattern. This is a 45 minute chart, and it's very clean. Uh, it doesn't have any oscillators, doesn't have any indicators, and yet. Uh, it's still uh, tradable. So that's uh, pretty much it. Folks, I, I want to take, take the time today, since we don't have any guests, to review. Uh, people have always asked me, you know, the big turning points in my life. And July was definitely the month of big turning points for me in 1974. I remember uh, July because the time period between July and October was uh, the worst time for uh, trading that I've ever done, but I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I started, you know, back in the late 60s and ran it up. We didn't have any bear markets, and when the bear market came, also known as the October crash, uh, I didn't know what to do, and I was adding to losers. You know, I was doing everything wrong. I made a great deal of money, spent a great deal of money, but July was, uh, was the key month. I remember uh, that so vividly because uh, I, I was uh, setting in the uh, uh, setting up against my uh, in, uh, in Beverly Hills at the Promenade, which became the uh, uh, Rodeo Drive. Uh, later, and I uh, just couldn't understand. Here I was, just a young guy. I was in my uh, early 40s, I think, 41, 42, and I. What was I? I was no so yeah yeah forty three forty two yeah anyway I was uh, uh, wondering you know why did I get so lucky I had all this money and I had all this lovely family and everything and I said gee I just don't what's what's the meaning of life I don't understand and I actually had tears in my eyes I was thinking of my mom who had passed away in January of nineteen seventy and uh, later on when I went through some psychological counseling uh, over the the losses I, I realized that was a big thing that the market was trying to tell me. But but in fact, when you went, when I went back and looked at it, it was a real turning point for me uh, in my life because I, I I I realized I could do these things in the market, but I didn't know why. I really didn't have a uh, you know a sound approach to it, and that's when I found the Gar I had the Gartley book, but I had not looked at it. And that's when I started looking at the Gartley book uh, shortly after. Uh, October, uh, but I think it was around the 14th of October when the market bottomed, uh, and I decided, well, I, I just didn't want to trade anymore because the account went debit by 2700 I waited a couple weeks, and I saw a nice uh, pattern and pork bellies and ABCD, and I, I covered the debit. But back in those days, folks, you could have you could trade in a debit balance because the 
the commodity firms, those they were the ones that determined the margins and the in the equity and everything like that, because there was no NFA and there was no CFTC. That CFTC didn't come on until uh, 1975, and then the NFA shortly thereafter. So that was not a problem. So basically, I started to study. And I uh, would go, would get up early, go to got to go into Conti and have a cup of coffee with everybody. Uh, then I'd do my work for Lily. Then I'd go over to the Investment Center bookstore, where Don Mack was there, and he had the original copy of the uh, Gartley book, which which was really a three ring binder. And I, I just studied pages two hundred, you know, to uh, two fifty. I, I cop- copied those pages and I carried them with me, you know. And I started looking at the patterns and understanding what I had done. And during this time, I was being mentored by Oscar McClure and Dave Nelson. These were two professional soybean traders, and they were looking at a potential big move coming in soybeans in 1975 and 1976. And I went and looked at the chart, and then it was certainly telling me that, wow, these are getting to be a buy down here. So maybe I should start looking at it. And what they did was they showed me that there was a spread relationship between July and December oil that only cost $90 to get in. The margin was $90. And if you bought July oil and sold December oil, uh, you had the $90, uh, you multiply that times six. So uh, you, you, were really look, you were looking at something that really didn't cost very much to get into. So I started buying those spreads, uh, July D spreads. And you know, I, I didn't. I didn't like spreads very much, and I probably should look at them more often because some of these things are, you know, really spectacular these these days. And I probably will, but I get I have a lot of fun just doing the 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 patterns themselves. So anyway, I start buying these and. Um, it took about two months. This went flat. I mean, every day it was uh, it was the same. They just took flat, and then one day on a Friday, the uh, the market jumped. The July jumped 30 points, and the December dropped 30 points, which was a 60 point drop, and that meant your $90 was now $360. Well, that continued on for three weeks, three or four weeks, every single day, right on the close. Boom, 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 boom. And somebody was stuck really bad. And it happened to be Willard Sparks, a Sparks grain. And they were heavily short soybeans, oil and meal. And they were on the wrong side of it because the Europeans started to buy. And also, um, China, I don't know where it was. It was Brazil or something had a little bit of a problem, and the market went nuts. And we went up, and you know, ended up closing it out, and it ended to be, you know, a pretty good uh, time frame. But uh, and right after that, I took a little break, and uh, just a short period of time after that, I was hired by Drexel Burnham, and I've told that story before. I'm not going to go into that, but uh, so out of bad things comes good things, and out of good things come bad things. And remember, what goes up must come down. For the cure for higher prices is higher prices, and the cure for lower prices is lower prices. And we're looking at a potential three drive to a top pattern in the uh, – NASDAQ and whether it works or not, you know, I don't know. I put a sell order out at uh, 10,600 and change, and I said, uh, stop it. You have to risk 100 points right now. It has about 150 point profit in it. Whether that's going to mean anything or not, I don't know. But now the stops at break even, and we'll see how, you know, that one holds up. But we'll see. We'll be right back. We'll talk about a few other of these markets and maybe a few stories. 877 927 6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, one of the questions that someone asked me, when was the time that occurred that I knew that I could make money in the markets? I never had a time that I didn't know that I could not make money in the markets. That was starting back into the early 60s with uh, silver. I mean, I just, uh, I, I was lucky, I guess, but I, I never, that never dawned on me that, that I couldn't. Even when I lost the money, I knew what I had done wrong. You know, I was just being arrogant and stupid, but, you know, and stupid and arrogancy don't work in these markets. <laughs> That's for sure. So uh, that was the that pretty much it. But the, the, I think the answer to the question is, is when did I really see see the similarities of what I'm doing now years ago? And that was back in, uh, you know, early uh, 1973 when I started to see the ABCD patterns, not knowing the whole gamut of what they uh, what they entailed I still knew that uh, I was able to uh, I was able to do it the question was uh, I wasn't able to prove it to myself till I got to Drexel and then remember when I got to Drexel I basically started buying gold and silver and uh, because I was following uh, you know the uh, what was it not uh, what was that guy's Harry Harry uh, what was the guy oh Harry Schultz and um uh, you know, and so I would watch what he was doing, and I started to see gold and uh, and silver, and I started to buy that, and I continued to do that for six years, and then it topped in 1980, and I did some short selling in that, but that that's basically it. You know, I watched the ABCD patterns, and I watched the Fibonacci numbers, and try to keep it as simple as possible. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You know, that's uh. You know that's all I'm uh, all I'm trying to to get through to you on this is I don't know I don't know whether the Nasdaq trade is going to work, but nobody else does either, folks. That's the key to what we're doing. So I, what my job is is to try to keep the risks as uh, as small as uh, you know I possibly can, and then uh, you know move on to the move on to the next trade. I don't try to be. Uh, you know, uh, all, all seeing things because I don't. I just watch the patterns that work, and when they don't, then I move on to uh, something else. That's the real key uh, to looking at these things. And I miss some. Here, let me show you one that we missed here that uh, still is out there, but we haven't done it. Here is the uh, – one second, get to here. 
Okay, hold on just a second here. There we go. Oh, Duffy's asking an interesting question here. Did I ever uh, draw the charts by hand? I did charts by hand uh, up until 1988. Uh, you know, that's when the the, uh, the the charting packages started in 1983 with, um, uh, what's those guys down in New Orleans, uh, CompuTrack with uh, Walter Bressert and uh, uh, who was else involved with the guy from New Orleans that was uh, Mark Douglas, Douglas's good friend. I can't think of his name right now. But those were the ones that brought out the first uh, charting packages in 83, 84. But I kept drawing those lines uh, on the chart. And I still think if, if you really want to learn how to do these, if you really want to learn how to do these patterns, start drawing them by hand. You know, print out a chart and then just start drawing the, the triangles and see how the market actually goes. Yes, I used Commodity Perspective. They were delivered uh, Saturday morning by special delivery. So you had the updated prices from Friday. They came in by 9 in the morning on Saturday. And so that's that's what basically I traded off. I, oh, I had stacks of those things. And, uh, you know, in fact, that's how I learned the butterfly pattern is my daughter would take those little coloring. She'd take her little coloring things on the thing and she would color out the triangles and then cut them out with the little plastic scissors and then put them on the refrigerator. And they look like, uh, you know, butterflies all the time. So that's basically when I started to see it with Bryce Gilmore in 1988. I knew that, uh, you know, that's where they came from. And you, you, you could see these patterns unfold. When, when, when I met Bryce in 1987, Seven. This was after the crash. It was in Chicago. Uh, you know, he had this program called the Wave Trader, and I could see how all the patterns were lining up with these ratios, and that was the that was the real key to me. I was able to uh, to see that, and that's uh, pretty much what I tried to do. Yes, I used a proportional divider. I still have it here on my desk. I have it set for six one eight and seven eight six, so I still have that uh, tool, and it's really fun to show people that have never seen the proportional divider work how proportional these markets really are and that's when you start doing these patterns like, like we're doing here you know it gives you a pretty good idea of what things are, are going to look like now we've got one forming right now let's just get this up here in the uh, gold market because we're already above the price level that we were expecting uh, this is the abcd structure on this we got up to 1824 i believe in the uh in the uh, gold, that's up right at 1.618 expansion, but that is, you know, a three drive to a top pattern. We've been bullish against gold up until this time, and so we think that this is probably it. Silver has taken out the highs of the last several weeks up at 1885. That's a good sign, but it's got to keep on going, exploding above 1900, and then it'll trigger that maybe this gold is going to take off. But it has, it has had this bullish chart for quite some time, but now, you know, if, if the if these charts are correct, we should be topping somewhere uh, in the gold market, and that would be, you know, be the thing that should be looking for. So that's my two cents worth, and I'm sticking to it. So I hope that helps you about uh, how how do you do this. But I, you know, I what I do now, folks, I keep it as simple as possible. I don't use oscillators or indicators because they do lag the market. Uh, they're very helpful sometimes for people to keep them out of trades or get them into trades. But, you know, I try to do it as simple as possible. I, I probably take more losses than I should, but the profits are bigger than the losses, and that's the key thing. And look look at Tom Hugard. He's only right about 25% of the time, and he makes a lot of money because he presses on the ones that win, and he gets out when the others are, you know, looking at these things. So we'll see. Today is going to be a really interesting day here because if the market – does get really strong here today or late in the day, that's going to tell us that this top may not be in and we're probably going to be going higher and we'll be able to see that. Um, okay, uh, Duffy's asking, will gold blow, blow that top out? Duff, Buff, Duffy, if I knew that, uh, <laughs> if I knew the answer to that, I'd know the answer to a whole, uh, you know, I, if I knew the answer to that, it would be a... Uh, uh, it would, you know, would be rather funny. I will show you this. So last, I have to show you this because I watched it last night for just a little bit. Let me get it up here. Where did I put the darn thing? Uh, was this it last night? Uh, yes. Here was. Uh, let me get the. Uh, let me get the thing up here. We'll be able to see here. Here is the. Uh, you'll see here. There we go. <clears throat> 
All right, you'll see this was what I was looking at last night. We were trading around 1805 and it had a positive bias to the upside. And we did get up to 1870. We backed off to 1813 and then we went up to 1823, 1824. I don't know if that's going to be uh, the top or not. All I'm saying is it's a pattern. And if we blow above 1830, you know, I've always, you know, if you look at the look at the week, look at the weekly report that I send out on 24/7, uh, you know, it basically said that there's a possibility of 1840 in the gold without any, you know, without any trouble at all. I mean, that's that's just it's not like you know Amazon or some of these others, but it's still a possibility of getting up to that level. That's what we that's what we're basically looking at, you know. So I'm just saying it's just a pattern. That's all we're looking at, boys and girls. That's all we're looking at, and that's what we're looking at. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're going to take a look at silver here. You can see the big ABCD pattern with the red thunderbolt up there. That measures up to about 1915. This looks like uh, we're, we've, uh, we're completing a triple top here if this is what it is. We're trading around 1898 and a half. The high's been 1899 and a half. So we've taken out the highs of the, all of June. So this could be extremely bullish if it can get above that 9th. 
1930 level. Uh, if it does that, gold will be well on its way to 1840 and maybe even higher than that. But uh, the gold still looks bullish. If it gets a good retracement, you ought to be looking at um, uh, wait, we've got a caller this morning. I think we have a caller from Florida. Shane, are you there? Can you uh -oh, hear me? Maybe not. Yes, sir. How are you this morning? Good, Larry. I'm great. So, how's how's the death uh, rate down in Florida? Uh, it's comparable to where it was near the peak. It's kind of oscillating back and forth, and okay. uh, so I'm going to talk about the overall state of the coronavirus if that's okay please do we have a lot of people with asking can we can you see the screen uh yes i think we can uh, let's double check here with uh uh, I'll have to. It doesn't seem to show it right now, but not to worry about it. We'll we'll we'll, we'll get it. Oh, there it is. It's up and now we're ready to go. It's showing okay, it now. So, so there's a bit of a mystery going on right now with the coronavirus, and there's a lot of conflicting information, and so uh, it's very confusing. And as viruses are, and so this one is no different. Um, so I'm going to go into a couple of slides here just to talk about what's going on. Uh, this is our fear and greed index which is not Corona, that's right around 48 for those of who are interested. And we'll talk more about this tomorrow. Uh, we'll talk about markets tomorrow, but the confirmed cases are globally are 11.6 million. And this curve is confirmed. So remember this will never fall because it's a, it's a curve that's showing uh, just like a, it's a cumulative gain of Corona. So it's not gonna ever fall. It's not gonna show you who recovered uh, this so this particular curve is just always climbing. It's just the rate of the climb will change depending upon what's going on. This does not control for the number of cases, and it does not control for uh, recoveries. So we have to get very specific when we talk about this corona. So the biggest, I think, the biggest enemy right now of this corona or of the people regarding coronavirus is politics. Uh, because these, depending on who you talk to, every answer comes out polit politicized. And so when we're talking about something like this, we need to be able to look at things objectively, whether it's from the left or from the right. And when people get political, um, they dig in and they don't want to acknowledge any positives on either side. So what I'm trying to do is give you a balanced perspective of what I think is going on, uh, a fair perspective, regardless of any political views. Uh, so let's talk about some mysteries here. So this is this is the cases that are rising, right? So you look at this and you might say, wow, you know, things are still getting bad. But then when you look at the death rates, the death rates are actually falling. So you've got these two conflicting factors right now. And the United States is surging. And but why why are the death rates falling? You know, that that's like and, they, and these are facts. This is not you know, these are just straight off of Google. I mean, this is the death rates are falling. There's a little bit of a tick up here. Uh, in the death rates, but you would expect the death rates to be surging like we're seeing with the overall cases. So why is this happening? Um, well, it depends who you talk to. I mean, if you talk to people on the left, they say one thing. If you talk to people on the right, they say another thing. But what I did was I took uh, the actual tests versus the actual cases, sorry, the new cases versus the number of tests that are going on. And what's actually happening is you get a curve that looks something like this. So this curve actually tells you the number of cases per test. So what's going on is back on the peak, we were only testing about 400, around 411 people per million. Okay. And so right now we're testing uh, almost 1988 people per million. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that as you test more people, you get more positives. So when you actually control for the number of tests, we are much closer to the lows in here than we are the highs. Okay, so the high came on uh, October, or sorry, April the 11th, and the low came on June the 16th. Now, this is about a four to one ratio, so it's about four times as many here as there are here. Uh, when we look at the ICUs in the whole state of Florida, the peak was about 60%. And about a week ago, they were at 23%. So that's about a three to one ratio. So I think this chart is much more accurate in terms of what's going on with Corona in the United States. Now, 
it's not to minimize it. It's a deadly disease. You definitely don't want to get it. You want to be wearing your mask and social distance. And this is where it, be this is where it becomes political. Uh, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. You need to be wearing a mask when you're out in public and you need to be social distancing, okay? Because this could rise back up to the peak. But if you want to be accurate to the data, this is what's going on. So this is this is what we're looking at in terms of corona. Um, so there was a little peak on July the 5th, okay? Uh, it could go back up after the holiday, but this is this is kind of, I think this is a much more accurate view of what is actually happening. Now, there's some states that are, like Florida, like we're terrible. They just shut down uh, Miami again. They shut down the restaurants again. So there's some hot spots that are really bad, of course. But as, as looking at the whole country, we're much closer to the lows than the highs. So this is a mystery. Uh, it's confusing, but I'm just trying to shed some light on some data here. Uh, so the number of cases is spiking. There's severe cases in Florida, Texas, California, North Carolina. So again, I talked about this, that the death... Deaths are falling, um, and when you normalize for the cases, we're much closer to the lows than the highs. Uh, now, we don't know why this is happening. Uh, it could just be there's more tests. It could also be the virus could be changing, or we could be getting antibodies, but some people, you know, one study in Spain showed that there weren't any more antibodies. So the, the point is the, the deaths are falling, um, and we have this coronavirus shutdown transit. I've been talking about this in the newsletter. This is the same one that came over the markets in March, uh, near the March lows. And so this is the this is a transit that shows the virus is increasing and shutdown, and that's coming in early August. Uh, a shutdown will affect the economy. It's definitely not good. It will affect the markets. And so that solar eclipse that we just had was on the Aries point, and we have a lot of points passing over that Aries point. So that's going to affect the virus. And I think that's what we're seeing now. That transit is describing exactly what's happening. And I talked about this way back in like March and, and April. So those are just some things that are going on now. Let's go to a controversial topic here, hydroxychloroquine. Um, this has been a very controversial treatment. Now, let me explain to you what's going on. So there's been studies, a lot of studies that show that it doesn't work some studies have shown that it does work, but what happened here in the Henry Ford Clinic is they actually treated this like Tamiflu. So are you familiar with Tamiflu, Larry? No, I'm not. Hello? Yes, no, I, I don't. Okay. I don't. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. I thought we lost connection. So Tamiflu, what happens with Tamiflu is when you get the flu, you can get this antiviral medication called Tamiflu. And it, it only works if you take it right when you get sick. And so what they did with this study was they, they well, treated it like Tamiflu. Uh, wait till Phyllis finishes sure. after the break, okay, Shane? Thank you very no much. No problem. The market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. 
An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Shane Smullyan, WolfTrader.com. You want to continue on, my friend? Hello? Oh, dear. Don't tell me we've lost connection. Uh, broadsword to Danny Boy, broadsword to Danny Boy. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? 10-4, 10-4, 10-4. Well, shucks. Okay, let's move on. I guess we've lost Shane, so uh, he's scheduled to be our guest tomorrow. So that's going to be okay. So we're good to uh, get these uh, little technical difficulties done here. We'll see now. We've been up to uh, Hello? 18... Oh, there you go. We, we we lost connection. Continue on about this uh, uh, COVID. I think it's very interesting. Please please continue, Shane. Can you see the screen? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, we're we're good. Okay. So hydroxychloroquine, very controversial. A lot of studies have come out and says that doesn't work. There were some preliminary studies that show that it did work. And um, I just want to point something out that. This stuff is complicated, people. This is, and, and everyone wants to get political with it. And when you get political, I find that when you get political, your IQ tends to drop because you get into these dogmatic views that you can't change your point of view because then you're going to agree with the other side. So the enemy of this is politics, people. We need to be able to look at this subjectively and look at the research. So yes, there's a lot of studies that show that hydroxychloroquine does not work, but this study looked at it like Tamiflu. So Tamiflu is an antiviral that if you give it early, when you get the flu, if you take Tamiflu, it works. It reduces the flu quickly. But if you already have the flu, Tamiflu is not effective at all. So what these studies were looking at initially was they were looking at this drug, hydroxychloroquine, when the people already had full-blown symptoms, okay? And so that was kind of like a 50-50, and then the, the, the risk factors associated with it are high, just to begin with. I mean, there's some risks with this, as with every uh, medicine. But this study actually showed it right when the people got it, they gave them the hydroxychloroquine, and it actually had a 50% improvement in the cases. In other words, only 13% died versus 26% that didn't, that, uh, that didn't have the drug. Okay, now this is not a... Uh, double blind test and there's, it wasn't perfect but the point is this stuff is complicated and, and it's confusing and you really have to dig into the data to understand this but the point of this study is the focus needs to be now on giving this drug at the beginning of corona when you first start to show symptoms that's what this study shows so I, I just want to point that out that this is a very nuanced topic and if you get political with it you're not going to be able to understand what's going on so I'm trying to look at this from a scientific perspective from the data to understand what's going on. Now, <clears throat> here's another topic that came out. And I talked about this, by the way, back in March, for everybody who has my newsletter, I talked about this, that this is an, enve this is an enveloped virus, and these things can travel in the air, okay? So now they're saying, well, 
coronavirus might be airborne. Well, this isn't a big surprise because we know that the, the avian flu traveled through dust storms through Central Asia. It traveled on dust, okay? Like that's, it's the same type of virus. It's the same, it's encapsulated virus. It's, a, it's, it's the same thing. I mean, it's not the same virus, but it's the same structure of the virus. It's the same size of the virus. So this shouldn't be a surprise. And, and when we talk about airborne, you know, I mean, it's the flu travels from from uh, from Africa on these dust storms throughout the Caribbean. I mean, that's a fact. I mean, this is like jur- like scientific journals talk about this, and and the avian the avian flu, like I said, traveled through and SARS traveled through dust storms through Central Asia. So, when we talk about airborne, there's all these different levels, and when we talk about droplets, but you know, when you have dust kicking up and dirt kicking up and these things, that could definitely be a possible way that this could travel. I mean, if you have a dusty room or there's smoky air, you know, so these are factors to consider. So now they're talking about, oh, it might be airborne. Well, that shouldn't be a surprise because these types of viruses can be. Now, I think the primary mode of transmission is through the droplets. And, you know, I will tell everybody this, this is just a summary. So the, you know, the cases are increasing. Okay. But the testing is increasing. So you're going to get more positives. The death rates are falling, and this is good. Uh, we don't know why. It could be because antibodies. It could be because the virus is mutating, whatever. The point is, that's good, and that's true. But the contagion rate is still high. Okay, so this is a very contagious disease, and you don't want to get it because you don't have to die to have severe consequences. I mean, I know somebody who got the flu and their lungs were scarred, and they have to get an MRI now. This was a doctor. It was just a regular flu, so you definitely don't want to get it. Uh, so you, you need to be wearing masks, okay? Regardless of your political views, you need to be wearing masks, and you need to be social distancing. I mean, this is like basic science 101, microbiology 101. You have to be doing that, okay? Because it still could reach an outbreak level, but it is possible that it's airborne, like I just showed you, it's possible. Uh, and that shouldn't be a surprise because other viruses have traveled through these dust storms, and that's not a big, that's not a big reach to say that. Um, now, the one thing I want to summarize here at the end here is that it's likely to surge in the fall and winter. And let me tell you why: these types of enveloped viruses do not like uh, relative humidities above forty percent. Okay, so the fact that we still have outbreaks in the middle of the summer means that when it gets cold, it's going to be worse, okay? So I think that the real danger here is going to come in November, which is the next shutdown transit I have, and then into like March. Now, hopefully by then, we will have more treatments. And they said possibly in the early winter that we might have some some type of a, of a vaccine coming out. But to me, the danger is going to be in the fall and the winter. It's not necessarily right now in terms of, of the death rates, but you could start to see a much, much, much higher outbreak because people are going to be inside and the weather is going to be less hot and humid, and that's going to make for a much more dangerous situation with the, the virus. So that's kind of my summary there for you guys. I hope it wasn't too, you know, too, too dry, but I mean, that's kind of how I see this whole virus and where we're going with this. Hey, this is great. I'd like to hear it, and we'll see you tomorrow, and we'll talk about the market stuff. How's that? Thanks, Larry. Sounds great. Okay, Shane Smolianfold, WolfTrader.com. Let's move on here to uh, these markets here. We've had a nice rally here in the NASDAQ. We've rallied 100 handles up to uh, 106, uh, 10,620. If we get above 10,650, we could easily make a new high. Uh, the key number to watch in the S&P, of course, is that old low down there. We're right, right at it right now at 31.58. It used to go back and touch the old low, so we'll see what's going on. The gold's had a high of uh, 1827 that's had a pretty good move and uh, let's see the other one uh, oh the uh, the British pound is making a nice move this morning we had a nice rally in the pound here of about 90 pips and I think it's an interesting spot here if you want to look at the pond because if it doesn't get above 126.20 uh, it certainly has a potential to uh, move to the downside 
Now let's go over to one other thing that I want to talk about. And this is that soybean trade, the same thing that we're doing in the NASDAQ as we don't know the fundamentals or anything. We're just looking at the chart. You can see the ABCD pattern. Now the difference between this one, the November beans, and the, and the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is making a three drive pattern with these ABCDs on the upside, whereas the soybeans are making an ABCD in a bear market. That's a Gartley pattern. Uh, the sell was at 8, uh, 9, 12. The high had been 9, 12 and a half. We've moved down to uh, uh, $9, so it moved 12 cents in your favor. So the way we play this now is we keep our stop at the break-even level because if it gets above that, uh, 19, uh, 9, 12 in these November beans, they could start to accelerate to the upside, much like we did in some of these markets. So let's take a break here, and we'll be back and talk about natural gas. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that will take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're going to take a look at the natural gas. I posted the chart here yesterday. We said it was completing that ABCD up there at that 192 level. Uh, it didn't go any higher than 192.70, and now we backed off about 10 handles. Now, what I'm going to do now is to show you what I'm watching on a shorter time frame. I go down to a 15-minute chart, and all I'm doing now is uh, – uh, the, the, Bill's asking the question, is it in a bull or a bear market? Bill, you have to tell me what time frame, because if you look at the daily chart, it's still in a bear market, because all we did is just complete an ABCD pattern in a bear market. But we're thinking possibly that 153 level could be a major low, so we're going to try to see if we could buy it. 
without risking very much. But you make you add a that's a great question to ask. And the question is, is it a bull or a bear market? If you look at that daily chart that I posted, it's still in a bear market. We didn't get any higher than that ABCD. That's why we were looking at that ABCD. That's the function of it, to tell you you know, some of these things. Because not looking at the fundamentals, you have to look at what price is doing. And price was saying that that was a completion. And now, if you look at this shorter time frame, going back over the last uh, 10 days, you can see here we're having a finally having a good correction. We're having a $0.10 cent correction, just like we did back on July. July 1st. They're nearly perfect. It's right at the 382 there at 183. So instead of, you know, buying it up there at 192, hoping for a breakout, this would be the place where you want to maybe take a stand and see if natural gas is going to work or not. And, and no one knows where it's going to work or not. And the longer term trend is still bearish. No question about that. So what you have to do now is determine whether, you know, this thing is going to hold this level. That's the whole key is you've got to take that responsibility to see if it's going to work. But it's done exactly what it did between June 30th and July 1st, just like it's doing between July 7th and July 8th. Is that going to continue? I don't know. All I know is it happened once before. If it happened once before, maybe it'll happen again. Remember, when you get into that swamp, folks, you got to kiss a lot of frogs before you find the princess. That's the key to this thing, and you've got to remember that uh, use that lip balm because those frogs can be a little nasty at times. So also live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless and try to help folks for, that have less than you. 